Hi, these info sessions are part of a wider user optic strategy of the European Commission. One of the aims of that strategy is to stimulate the development and the use of innovative downstream applications that incorporate Copernicus data and services. But before going further in any downstream use, we need to have a clear overview of the different data access points available. In this module, I will give you an overview on where to find the data. For those who are not familiar with it, Copernicus is the European Earth Observation and Monitoring Programme. It's a constellation of satellites making millions of daily observations. It builds on a global network of thousands of land, air and marine based sensors to create the most detailed pictures of Earth. Copernicus space infrastructure and the Copernicus services are made freely available and accessible to any citizens and any organization around the world. This program exists thanks to three major components. The first one is the space component coordinated by the European Space Agency, for which the Sentinel missions are operated both by UMETSAT and ESA. The Sentinel network is also supported by contributing missions. Then there is the Copernicus services themselves, providing a wealth of information. And the third one is the in-situ network of sensors mapping the world and Europe. Copernicus offers several types of data to the public, there are the satellite images or data from the Sentinel satellites and there is information or data from the Copernicus services themselves. The services provide a vast array of products based on a combination of data that deliver information such as on sea surface temperature, land use and land cover, air quality forecast, etc. Entrepreneurs and developers can use these data for free to build value-added services and applications. Copernicus provides knowledge, but it all starts with data. In the following slides, I will describe you the different data access points that are mentioned below. This slide provides you with an overview of all the Copernicus access points. There are 10 of them. Four are providing access to the satellite data, with access to images in near real time or to the past archives. And six of them are providing access to added value products here, indicators, or forecast. Let's start with the access to satellite data. All the four access points dedicated, two are managed by the European Space Agency, while the two others are handled by UMETSAT. The first one managed by ESA is the Sentinel Scientific Data Hub. It is full, free and open for anybody and gives access to Sentinel 1, 2 and 3 through a graphical user interface, which is user-friendly. More than 1,050 new products are published every day. You can even search, browse, discover and visualize the data without any registration. Registration is only needed when you want to download the data. In the graphic user interface of the Scientific Data Hub, you can define an area and a period of interest, specify a Sentinel mission and any parameter related to the satellite imagery. The search results show the metadata of the image and the thumbnail when available. The images can be downloaded directly, also limited to two images at the same time. To automate the download, you can also use a second access mechanism, the API Hub. We are not going to describe it now, but you will find more information on this API Hub on the ESA website or on the dedicated info session. The second access point managed by ESA is the Space Component Data Access. It provides high resolution and very high resolution images of the 39 European states together with a worldwide radar coverage in high resolution. This space component relies on a constellation of dedicated satellite missions, first the Sentinel, as well as on a set of Earth observation space missions not dedicated to Copernicus but contributing to it enabling an harmonized data provision to the Copernicus users. The Copernicus users eligible to access data from that contributing missions includes the six Copernicus services, institutions and bodies of the European Union, participants in research projects fin financed under the European Union research programs, the general public, public authorities, international organizations and NGOs. Each user category has specific access rights to the dataset. Now that we've seen the ESA access point, let's jump on the one managed by UMETSAT, the European Organization for Meteorological Satellites. 
UMEDSAT offers a range of data delivery mechanisms to match the need of the user community. The first one is a near real-time push service provided by UMEDCAST. UMEDCAST is a multi-service push dissemination system based on a multicast technology. It guarantees you with a daily stream of fresh new products available. The multicast stream is transported to the user via satellite, it's UMEDCAST satellite, or terrestrial, which is the UMEDCAST terrestrial network. UMEDCAST satellite has coverage in Europe, the Middle East and Africa, while the UMEDCAST terrestrial can be used by agencies connected to national research and education network worldwide. Any environmental data of any format can be distributed through this uh, mechanism. The service delivers more than 380 different product collection, including UMEDSAT own satellite data, Copernicus marine and atmosphere data, and a wide range of third-party products as well. The second data access point from UMEDSAT and the latest available is the Copernicus online data access. This download service offers all Sentinel-free marine and atmosphere products through a rolling buffer which is at maximum will span up to 12 months worth of data. Access may be through an FTP client or via a user interface. The FTP provides access to a fixed set of global and regional marine and atmosphere data. The user interface allows users to select their own area of interest from the global products. Both services offer easy download through scripts interface. Finally, please note that even if there is several access mechanisms UMEDSAT requires, only a single registration that allows you to access data in the most convenient mode for you. Now, we have covered all the data access points for satellites data. So let's jump to the Copernicus service to provide you with an overview of their catalogues. There are six thematic services. Five are under full, free and open access. Land, marine, atmosphere, climate and emergency. While the Copernicus security service has restricted access. The six thematic services allow the provision of valuable data monitoring Earth environment. This data is freely available to be transformed in knowledge and services by the scientists, the citizens or entrepreneurs. Let's have a quick look at the content of each service. Let's start with CLMS, the Copernicus Land Monitoring Service. It provides under, under full free and open access geographical information on land cover on related variables such as the vegetation of the water cycle. CLMS operates at global, pan-European and um, regional levels, providing you with different products at different resolutions. CMEMS is the short name for the Copernicus Marine Environment Monitoring Service. It provides full, free and open access to data and information related to global ocean and six regional seas. The products available are near real-time products, multi-year products, in-situ observation and forecasts, that are also available through the CMEMS catalogue. Using information from both satellite and in-situ observation, it provides state-of-the-art analyses and forecasts daily, which offer an unprecedented capability to observe, understand and anticipate marine environment events. The CMEMS website is the one-stop shop for ocean information. Registration is required to download the data, but search and viewing are not. The website works like any e-commerce site with an add to cart button once you find the product of interest, unlike you do not have to pay for it. CAMS is the Copernicus Atmosphere Service. CAMS produces useful data for a large number of applications covered by the public and the private sectors. For example, the solar energy industry, health and transport or climate change. CAMS is not a meteorological service, but it can provide answers to the following questions, such as what will the air uh, we breathe be like tomorrow? Will air pollution events such as the smoke from forest fires in Canada or volcanic eruption in Iceland affect air quality in continental Europe? Or where are the best places for my solar farm? What is the yield I can expect? To enter the CAMS website, you just have to follow the link in this slide. Registration is required to download information, but search and viewing are not. Like all the previous Copernicus services, all data is under free, full and open policy.
Now it's C3S that stands for Copernicus Climate Change Service. It aims at providing contributions to these challenging questions. How is the climate changing? How will climate change be in the future? How will it impact society? C3S is in a pre-operational phase of development with an approach of sectoral information systems such as water, insurance, energy to implement a robust monitoring and analysis service of the Earth's climate by 2018. C3S delivers seasonal forecasts and climate predictions by holding records on temperatures, rainfall and drought, sea levels and ice sheets. While under construction, some generic datasets are already available through the European Centre of Medium Range Weather Forecast website. And I invite you to visit the portal in this slide. Now let's have a look at the Emergency Management Service. It is one of the tools with which the European Union delivers its assistance to the victims of disasters occurring both in the European Union members' countries and through the world. Copernicus EMS supports players in the field of crisis management by providing information based on space data combined with other sources of data, taking into account all the national capacities. It addresses disasters caused by natural hazards such as floods, forest fires, earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, landslides, storms, etc., as well as man-made hazards such as industrial accidents or oil spills. Inside and outside the European Union, EMS is active since four years and was activated more uh, 180 times, delivering more than 2,300 maps to the end users. EMS can only be triggered by specific users, such as the civil securities, but everybody can access the maps delivered. That's why we qualify it as free and open instead of full free and open. The content of EMS can be twofold. The EMS mapping component provides timely and accurate geospatial information derived from satellite remote sensing and complemented by available in-situ or open data sources. And the EMS early warning component aims to improve the preparedness and therefore the responsiveness of national authorities in relation to floods and wildfires. The last of the six services is the Copernicus uh, Security Service. It aims to support European Union policies by providing information in response to Europe's security challenges. It improves crisis prevention, preparedness and response in three key areas – border surveillance, maritime surveillance and support to European Union external action. Its access is strictly restricted to authorized users. As we've seen in this presentation, most of the data available are full, free and open to anybody. That means that beside the data access point entrusted by the European Union, any country or even private actor is free to provide its own access to some of this huge amount of data. The following slide shows you some of the national initiatives mapped, but it's a fast evolving domain. And the second slide shows you the private initiative, even if the European Union does not endorse any particular commercial solution. With such amount of new data and services available every day, it is expected that the Earth observation sector will be a fast evolving sector in the coming years. It could follow the rapid development as the one we have seen with the mobile platforms and the development of applications. I thank you for watching this video and I hope it helps.